Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Dead by Daylight, the board game by Level 99 and Behavior Interactive. Level 99, creators of Imperial Spells and Steam, Millennium Blades, Battle Con, and Bullet, and much, much more in the board game industry, and Behavior Interactive, creator of the video game Dead by Daylight, and now the more recent title, Meet Your Maker. This is a, co a, co a cooperatively created board board game um, from the main video game Dead by Daylight, a game I've been playing for over half a decade now. In the game, you're playing as either a survivor or as a killer. Survivors are going around this map attempting to complete generators, and by the time they complete their last one, they want to escape, get to the exit gate, power it up, and leave. The killer, on the other hand, is attempting to slay the different survivors. They're going to be going around and smacking survivors with their weapon utilizing their powers and slowly, slowly putting them on these hooks here. If you go on a hook three times, you're out of the game. And if the, the uh, killer can eliminate each of the survivors with those three hooks, then they will win. And that's basically the idea of the game. This is a hidden movement style game where you're utilizing cards from your hand to move across pathways on a game board. And you're going to be switching it up with multiple different game boards, multiple different killers, and different types of survivors. Anyway, I'll tell you how to set the game up, how to play the game, and then of course, my review. First things first, this is a three to five player board game. Meaning if you're playing a lesser number of players, then a certain number of survivors will go to a certain number of players. So in a three player game, one survivor is going to be getting two of the characters and the other two are going to get one, totaling four. And then the other player is going to be playing as the killer. Each player is going to choose their survivor or survivors. And there are a wide variety of different survivors that you can choose from, from the video game. And each of the survivors have their own unique abilities on them. And there is a multitude of different choices and combinations that you can have therein. As well as, of course, on the back of each survivor is going to explain the different type of interactions that they can take throughout the game. After you've selected your survivor, you're going to give yourself two blood points that you will put on your main character board and you will take your miniature. The killer will do the same thing, but instead of two blood points, the killer will get four. Then you're also going to choose your board. There are four boards in this game to start off with in the collector's edition, and you're going to select either the front or back of either of the two boards. Right here, I have taken Ormond, so I'm going to be placing this guy down, face up in the field, and then the setup begins. Each of the different areas in Ormond are going to have a number of these tokens. The tokens are illustrated at the top of each of the different rectangles here, and based on the colors of each of the symbols is how many of those symbols go into the area. So if I have two green, one red, and a yellow, I will place one of each of those tokens down in this area. And you'll do that for all the areas on the game board. You're also gonna take these hook state tokens, give each one to a survivor in the game, and then the rest of them will be set next to the hook state on the top left hand side of the board. The top right hand side of the board will have generator states. You don't have to worry about those just yet. Each player is going to take one of the Dead by Daylight black dice and roll the die. Based on what you roll is where you're going to be placing your character. And if anybody rolls in the same space as a killer or as another player, that's fine. And they could all go on the same space or all be on different spaces. Take the specific entity token and place it somewhere within reach in the game board. And then make sure that you give every single player four cards. The Sprint, Sneak, Vault, and Crouch cards. They are one of each of the different four colors. And then for the killer, you will do the same, but you will give them an additional card called the Wait card. Some killers may change this rule though. Then go ahead and give one of the survivors the main token in the game. This is going to illustrate which survivor is starting throughout the game. The last thing you're going to be doing is setting aside generators, hooks, blood points, and your generator progression tokens. And finally, your item deck. Shuffle it up and place it within reach of all players. And after that, you're pretty much ready to go. It's a quite simple setup for the game. Let's get into how the game is played. Dead by Daylight is going to be played over a number of rounds until either one of two different states occur. Either A, the survivors are able to power up four of these generators and power up the exit gate with one survivor. That would mean that they would win. However, the killer is trying to do the opposite. The killer is trying to place survivors on hooks. When he places a survivor on a hook, they're going to get one of these tokens and they'll place it on this hook state board. And additionally, for every turn at the end of a turn, if there's a survivor on a hook, you'll place an additional one on this track here. Filling this up means the killer wins. It's one of two ways. 
The game rounds are pretty simple. There are four main phases. You have the planning, then you have the survivors, then you have the killer, and then you have the cleanup. Now, during the planning phase, each player is going to get one of these four cards to place down in front of them uh, next to their player board. They could choose to sprint, sneak, vault, or crouch. And it is green, blue, yellow, and red. They're just going to take this card down and place it down, and everyone will do so, including the killer. But the killer actually has something unique about them. They get two turns in a row. So the killer will be able to place two cards, one to their left, one to their right, which means the left one they will do first and the right one they will do second. After everybody has placed one of their cards down, then that's pretty much it. That's the whole planning step and they're done. Then survivors will take their turns. Starting with the survivor who has the token, they are going to reveal the card they placed face down. That card is then going to allow them to move to an adjacent space based on the color. If I am playing as Meg here and I am on the storage loca location on Ormond, I will be able to move across the green marker. The green marker will take me to the entryway. After I have moved, the card is done, and now I will do the other two things in the step. The first thing I will do is I will flip over any token I would like. I can flip over the green ones, the blue ones, the yellow, or the red, just depends on what is there. After I have flipped over something, uh, then I'm going to see what it does. Now, if it is yellow, most likely it will be a generator, and if you have the collector's version of the game, you will take a generator and place it on that space. And if it's anything else, in fact, you can go ahead and look at the back of this player board here and we'll tell you there is a chest or a locker for the blue tokens, crows or pallets for the green, there is a generator or the exit gate for the yellow, and finally for the killers, there's going to be the hook or the hex totem for the boldness types. And each of these do something different. And in fact, after you flip over a token, you're going to interact. And as a survivor, you can only interact with whatever is on the space that you are in. If you want to interact with a chest, you will take a card from the deck here. You can only ever have one of them, and it's an item which you can use and discard based on what it says. If it's a locker, you can hide in it, and whenever a killer goes onto that space to try and interact with you, you'll have an opportunity to avoid being hit, but it could also go bad for you and the killer could pick you out of the locker to put you on a hook. If you're going for green, maybe you have a crow. The crow will let you actually get an extra movement, an extra turn, so to speak, uh, but you're going to have to give the killer a blood point, which can help them use their abilities. You could do a pallet by placing it on one of these squares in between the rectangles of the spaces. connected by the colors, which can prevent a killer from going into your space, slowing them back down a bit. Uh, you could go ahead and do the yellow, which is the most obvious. It's going to be generators or exit gates. Exit gates are basically useless until all four of the generators you need to complete are completed, in which case when they are completed, you can then power up the exit gate. Or it could be the generator, which will allow you to roll skill checks and hopefully succeed them, thusly completing gens. Finally, you have the red. The red are hooks, which are good for only the killer. And the Hex Totem is are going to allow you to cleanse it, thusly gaining you blood points. And if you leave them alone, the killer can use them to gain blood points of their own. There are other things you can do when it comes to interacting in this game as a survivor. If there is a survivor in your space that has been injured, you can choose to heal them. Um, and there are also might be a various, some various other things involving your powers that you can do. But for the most part, that's what you're going to be doing to interact. You're going to be doing skill checks on generators. You're going to be entering lockers or utilizing crows to take extra actions, so on and so forth. Characters also have special abilities, which will allow them to take a bonus turn. If you can take a bonus turn as a survivor, you can do it as many times as you're able to do based on your powers and the stuff on the field. For instance, maybe you go from crow to crow to crow, giving the killer more blood points, but allowing yourself to utilize extra cards here. Whenever you've played a movement card, you can't use it again until the next round, so you'll have to be forced to use the other cards of the other colors as you progress throughout the game board. You will, as a survivor, take your turn, flip over this, reveal a token, and then perform an interaction with whatever it is that is there on the rectangle or your location on the board. Then you will pass and the next survivor will do the same thing. They will reveal one of their cards, they will then flip over a token, and they will then interact. Until all survivors have done that and then it's the killer's turn. The killer functions very similarly to the survivor. The killer is going to reveal their left hand card, their left hand movement card, and they're going to move, flip over, and interact. 
And additionally, this the killer has a power. The power can be used once around, so when they've placed their two cards down, they flip over one, they can use their power before or after, and then of course, they can use their power before and after the next card that is flipped over, because they get kind of two turns in a row. Additionally, each of the characters has powers, which I'll explain later. Because for the most part, killers are going to interact just like they would, just like the survivors would. The only difference is that killers are able to injure other players. So if a killer is on the same space as another player, they can use their interaction to injure that player by giving them one of these little injure markers and placing it underneath them. Killers are also able to engage generators. If, if a survivor managed to do a skill check on a generator and increased its progress, then the killer can go over there and interact with it by removing all progress from that generator. Killers are able to pull people out of lockers. Uh, killers are able to do uh, certain things based on the tokens that are revealed. Like for instance, if there is a hook on the space, that's a space that will allow the killer to drag survivors onto it. Um, and you always just replace them with these if you have the collector's edition. Or if it is a totem, one of these guys here, hex totem, they can, if they're on the space, choose to interact with it to gain blood points. And after the killer has done one of their cards, they will flip the card over, they will move to the space, they will flip over a token just like anybody else, and then they will interact with the space, whether it be with a survivor or with something on the field there, whether it be a generator or a hex totem. They will then do the next card they have on the right hand side, flipping that over and then interacting, etc, etc. There's a couple other really cool things with a killer. Killers, if you have interacted with a survivor that is on the same space as you and they are already injured, you're in fact going to attempt to hook them. You will choose to instantly hook them if there's a hook on the same space. You'll just simply put them on the hook here. If the survivor has a bonus hook token on their player board, you will include it on the main game board. And if at the end of the round that survivor is still there, which in this case it will be, you'll get an extra token from the supply to put onto the board here. If a survivor is on the same space and you've interacted with them and they are injured, but the hook is two spaces away, uh, you're going to go ahead and count one, two. Okay, two spaces away. The survivor can then roll two dice. And if either of them are a great success, because in general you'll have one, two, three, and four, which are successes, F5, which is a great success, and then you have this skull here, which is a, a failure. Failures will give the killer a bonus blood point. One through four is a success, and five is a great. So on only a great success will a survivor be stopped from one location to another. So I, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put, put this guy on this hooks here. I'll roll the first, the survivor roll the first die. That was just a regular success, no good. Now I'm gonna take him to the next area. Oh, a great success. That means that the survivor actually gets dropped here, is able to move on the next turn, avoiding the killer's grasp. However, if the killer uh, was uh, lucky enough to where the survivor didn't roll a great success, then the survivor would go onto the hook. So putting survivors on closer hooks is gonna be more useful. However, putting them farther away might help you with your objectives. And that's basically how the game is going to work. You'll be moving back and forth through the rounds. So there's a cleanup phase where everybody's going to get their cards back, whatever cards they played, their bonus actions, and you'll rinse and repeat. There's also some unique little twists and turns to the game. For instance, the killer may take one bonus action or one bonus turn. They can spend four blood points from their main player board, and they can just take a third action on their on their round, but they're not able to use the cards they've already played. So you're going to be able to utilize your other movement cards to get around the game board if you have the extra blood points. So giving killers too many blood points is dangerous. Survivors to perform skill checks will be rolling these black die here. On a one through four, they'll put one token in here, and on a five, they will put two. And when there are three total, this is completed, you'll take this away, you'll add the marker, and place it on the completed generator space. And that will be at one of four that you will need to complete the game. And that's pretty much the entire idea of the game. There's some unique killer powers and how blood points work, but I'll talk about most of that in my review for the game. But it's a hidden movement style game. All players place cards down. They're going to move, they're going to flip a token, and they're going to interact in some way. And you'll rinse and repeat that with the killer getting two turns on the round until one of the two events happen. Either the survivors have reached the number of hook states equal to the killer to win, or if the survivors have completed four generators, gotten to the exit space, and then done the same thing with generators as with the exit space by rolling the die and getting the, the, the successes and then escaping with at least one of them. Okay, let's talk about my review. So Dead by Daylight, the board game. Uh, this game here is very dependent on not only your killer and its power, but also the perks for both killer and survivor. 
perks for the survivor work the same as the killer. You'll have a certain number of blood points that you can spend for the various different abilities that each have a cost to them and a requirement. And when you meet both, you're able to do the ability. Maybe it makes you unhealthy when you are healthy to make somebody else healthy. Maybe it allows you to clear gens faster. Maybe it'll let you take an extra bonus turn. And it's all based on different things that can happen throughout the game. The killer has the same thing as well. The killer could be the doctor with a specific power to help drain blood points from other players who are adjacent and uh, if they don't have blood points, they can become mad. And when they become mad, they have to roll a different die. Speaking of die in the game, the normal skill check dice you'll be using is the 1 to 5 plus a negative, the negative being the failed skill check. Uh, the 1 to 4 is a regular success, and that 5 is a super success. But when you have to roll the danger die, now you have four different failures and only two great successes. Yes, it's a little better on the great success, but it's even better for the killer with all the negatives. And negatives will generate blood points for the killer. The killer has a variety of ways of generating blood points. They can go ahead and interact with a totem. They can go ahead and have somebody roll the negative on this die. And then certain perks and abilities that killers have will also generate tons of them. Survivors have two main ways. They are able to destroy the totems on the game board that are, that are the killers, gaining two, and unhooking their survivor friends, which will generate them one. And there's uh, some other perks as well that probably help along the way. Um, and utilizing these perks is going to be very important in the game. Speaking of utilizing these perks, there are unique decks of cards that you can select to use as opposed to your main abilities. You can shuffle these up deal out a number of them to each player, and then have each of them select three, and thusly change up their perk board. And the same can be said for the killers as well. The killers have their own set of all the different perks from all the killers on card form, so you can just simply add to the main game board, thusly changing and switching up how the game is played. Along with, of course, the killers still getting to keep their power. There's also four different unique game boards. You have Ormond, you've got the Macmillan Estate, and the other one on this side here, because they're both double-sided, which is nice. Uh, there's Auto Haven Wreckers, and there's also one underneath this as well. All the game boards feel a little bit the same um, because you're basically just got a bunch of squares with a bunch of lines across them, but it does have unique art for each of the different uh, games or the different like locations in the video game. And there are some different ways in which the board will be utilized, which is important for some killers uh, comparatively to others, such as like the Blight, who's going to be using cards the, as his power to discard to move additional spaces. He'll be running around the game board. Um, and that's pretty much how the killers and characters act. They have their own unique power for the killers. They have their own unique perks. Survivors have their perks. They have a blood pool. And then so the killers get two actions, whereas the survivors each get one. And the killer can always take a bonus action as long as they have four blood points to spend. Whereas a character can only do it if they encounter a crow or have a unique perk that allows them to do so. But they can do as many as they're able to do. The game board here, you have the hook state. As soon as you hook somebody in this game, bam, you're going to get a token from them. Now, if you hook them again, you won't. But at the end of every round, if there's a person on a hook, you will get one token for each person on a hook, which means if you get three people on a hook, it's basically game over. The game instantly starts to snowball as soon as you've got two people on a hook. So survivors are going to start feeling the pressure pretty quickly. And that being said, the game can snowball in either direction. If you've got two people on a hook, you're going to get two of these tokens. Plus, at the end of the round, you're going to get two more, one for each survivor on a hook. There's only four left in the game. If they're only able to rescue one person, the next round is going to be one. And if you manage to get somebody else down, that's going to be an extra one, and then you're going to get one more for them being on a hook. You see how quickly that can escalate. And the same can be said with these gens here. The moment a generator is done, you're going to be placing a generator token on this game board here. You only need four of them, and if you haven't caught a survivor or hooked a survivor by the point they have two or three of these, Ooh, you are in trouble because the last thing they need to do is just go to the exit gate. They need to turn it on and then one person needs to escape and the whole team wins, which is a little different than when you're playing the video game. The video game, you could get two people. They basically lose and the other two escape and they win. Well, actually, it's kind of like if you have two, then it's going to be a tie. And if you have three people escape, then it's going to be a success. And then four is like a super success. And that's kind of the, the way the game does it. But it still doesn't feel super great when you get hooked. But in this game, as soon as one person uh, is able to turn the exit gate on, that's it. And the game is over and you guys win. And if the killer can get this track done, then they win. Uh, the game board does have some unique twists and turns to it. You're going to have these different locations on the board that are uh, unbreakable from the survivor's point of view, but the killer can go across them, opening up the game board a bit. 
Uh, there's pallets that can be dropped on the field, slowing down the killer. There are items that you can utilize. When you go rummage through a crate, you might get something like a broken key that will let you discard this to gain a reroll or a single bonus uh, blood point. Firecrackers that can uh, remove breakable walls or prevent the killer from moving into your space, etc. etc. There's a bunch of unique items that help in this game. In fact, this is the one game where the break the broken key is actually pretty useful. <laughs> So uh, there's also different tokens for all the different characters in the game, all the different killers. Some of them have utilized different things. You have the different potion bottles that the clown is going to throw. You have the uh, different like throwing knives that you're going to have the trickster using and uh, so on and so forth. The trapper's got his traps, if you know what I'm saying. So uh, this game has a unique board experience. It's a little bit smaller than I'd like with a little bit less locations. I kind of was hoping that I would have more specific spaces that you could go on, maybe feel a little bit more like a hidden movement, programmable movement type of of game it does it it's just very very light which is going to be very good for like a gateway type of hidden movement slash you know programmable movement style game uh, the different tokens being flipped over is fun i enjoy that it feels good to like is this area going to have a generator oh no this is where the exit gate is okay it, it makes sense it works in the theme of the game and the board game and uh there are little changes in how this is played compared to the game but they are coincided very well uh, and like I said, they're both very, very swingy. The game itself is swingy, and so is this. Some of the characters are more one-sided than others. Some of the perks are just straight better than others. And that all kind of attaches to it as well. If you've ever played Dead by Daylight, and you want to experience it in board game form with playing up to five players, this is going to be a great pickup for you. There's a lot of qualities to this game that share the same commonalities in the, in the video game, as well as the negatives in the video game kind of also attached to the board game. And that's kind of to be expected. You can expect a swinging nature. You can expect some of the killers to be more dangerous than others. And some of the survivors, if you're playing with a survivor that specifically makes poor choices all the time, it can greatly uh, affect you in this game. You cannot work on your own to succeed this you have to work with other players more players is better it keeps the um the players from not having to well i mean it's, it's kind of a twist right if you have a player that has multiple survivors they have more abilities and they know where their players are going but it's hard to keep track of what their abilities are and how they're going to utilize them where with more players you lose that communication as to where they're going but you gain all the different perks and abilities that players can specifically focus on and know where they're best at and how to utilize them uh, when I first played this game, I was kind of disappointed. I was nervous. Um, I felt like it was swingy. And I, as I, I felt like it was very, very killer-sided. And then we started playing with more killers. I wanted to give this a fair shake and play with as many of the killers as I could. Um, and after playing with five, six killers now, I can say that it's, it's very balanced in the sense of depending on the survivors you pick and the killer you pick, what map you're playing on, and then how everybody kind of plays will make a big difference. If you've got a very killer-sided map with a specific type of a killer and then survivors choose perks that are not super great for them, the killer is going to win and vice versa. But really, it depends on where you move in this game. That's the most important aspect of it and how you counter these killers, or some of them with more powerful abilities, yes, but each killer is beatable. Each killer might have an advantage in certain ways, but if you're smart and sneaky, you can avoid capture and escape. And same with the killer. If you are figuring out what the server's gonna do, what generators are most likely to be done, and how to get to those areas and kind of protect them and kind of guard them, then you have that also uh, a useful ability as well. Okay, quality of the game. The boards are excellent, high quality, easy to see, easy to know how to set the game up each and every time, where you're gonna be moving, the different coloration in the game is nice and simple. Um, all of the miniatures for the collector's edition are excellent, all the extra characters, and there is so much replayability in this game. It's the biggest thing, the biggest hands up I give for them is they went above and beyond to make sure that they included all the survivors and try to add all the perks they could and all the killers and all the unique powers feel different. Each killer feels different. They do not feel the same. They function differently on a game that mainly plays the same. Flipping cards over, you play one or two cards, killer, survivor, and then you move to a space, flip over a token and do one of the things that you possibly can do. If you can do anything, that's sometimes the thing, things that can happen. But each gameplay is different based on what characters you have and the perks you use and the killers that you bring are you going to have to deal with. Even the setup for the game is going to change how the game is played. You might be stuck with a ton of survivors right next to the killer and that killer has an ability to bounce back and forth to all the survivors injuring them, thusly costing you a lot and having to make you climb back a mountain to get out of the game. Um, 
I love all of these tokens. I love all of the cards and how illustrated they are and straightforward they are. They make sense and it's they even function. Any things that like weren't technically in the game, I don't think these specific vault and uh, crouch and sprint um, icons are in it, but it looks like it could be part of the game. Um, and all the characters look great. I can tell the difference between them. I'm um, looking forward to coloring them. I actually painted the bases, so it'd be easy to see on a live stream how this game was played. Um, but I'm looking forward to painting all of them. The quality, hands down, overall is excellent. I went for to make this game as close to the video game in a board game form as possible. And in that case, they did a wonderful, wonderful job. Dead by Daylight is a wonderful board game, as long as you don't mind the fact that it could be swinging and you might get stuck and not have a chance to win if you don't play correctly early on. It's one of those build up games and things that can happen can change instantly in a moment. Thank you for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Dead by Daylight, the board game by Behavior and Level 99 Games. If you're interested in picking this game up, there's a link down below in the description where you can go ahead and check it out. You can also go ahead and head over to our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, kickstart lists, and more. Or if you want, you can join me in playing Dead by Daylight. <laughs> Play this game all the time. I've seen quite a few of you actually in the game. Uh, one, one just recently was like, "Oh, you play my unfiltered gamer? The real one plays this game." I'm like, "Oh yeah, I love this game. In fact, I'm playing even more now because I got to talk about the board game and its uh, similarities." So, yes, um, Zero Day is coming out soon. Zero Day is a board game we are making. Uh, it's a one versus many, but the many are not working together. Card game slash party game, dark futuristic sci-fi game. There's links down below as well, Patreon, and of course our Discord so you can see the art. All right guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to venturing into the fog with you next time.